Right then, you lot. I have some random stuff from my fridge and I've got some stuff from Sainsbury's. The random stuff from my fridge is a one scotch egg left from a packet, some bacon bits, an open packet of um, black pudding which one piece has been taken out of. Leftover from the hand of flowers is some sourdough and I have some posh eggs because they were the only eggs left in the supermarket. Um, and I've also got some random, a little bit ropey button mushrooms and we are going to make a bit of an omelette. It's quite, this is like a fridge omelette, it's everything thrown together. This isn't like TV land where you have all the lovely ingredients that look perfect. My fridge is pretty much exactly the same as yours. Now, the bread, I'm going to cut it into chunks, veg oil in a pan, quite a bit, okay, because we're trying to get some flavour here and that flavour is going to come from the bits of bacon, okay, so the bacon bits go into the pan. I'm going to fry it off and get lots of lovely bacon flavour, okay, but there's quite a bit of fat in that pan because that's quite important because once this is fried off, all the flavour goes into that oil and then I'm going to fry the bread into it. I've never ever put a scotch egg in an omelette before, but it could be quite random to see how it works. Chopped up into chunks. Sausagey, eggy flavour. Got a red chilli. What I'm looking for is a bit of a contrast. So everything we're doing is kind of salty, rich, porky, bacony kind of flavours but I do want a little bit of punch of something coming through so it cuts through all the richness that might be going on. Here, I've got a jar of tomatoes. Again, they're gonna be little nuggets of flavor that come through the omelet. I've got some capers, I've got an open jar of capers, I'm gonna use that as well, because they've got acidity with them. And you can see, hopefully, the bacon's beginning to get a little bit crispy. You know that smell like burger van smell? That's the flavour that you're looking for. All that bacon fat is going to be absorbed by the bread as you fry it and cook it. Mushrooms. Just going to quarter them. Take the stalks off. But this is a perfect excuse for using up all of those things that are in your fridge. The smell of that bacon is delicious. And all of that flavour has gone into that pan, all right? At this point, start frying the bread. And if it needs a bit more oil, we can add it to it. We're just going to make it nice and crispy. So just keep that bread moving around. You don't want to burn it, but you do want it to get like toasty and crisp. You can see that's all nice, crispy, brown. Take that out. I'm going to fry this random piece of black pudding. I'm going to get that really nice and crispy as well. And in a bowl, I'm going to crack whisk up six eggs okay so this should feed two people six posh eggs if you've just got six standard eggs that's also fine whisk up the eggs good pinch of salt and pepper black pudding is nice and crispy eggs are getting whisked okay take the black pudding out then stick the mushrooms in Nice little knob of butter at this point. This is pretty random, I have to be honest. So in here we've got the bacon, the bread. It's all nice and crispy, crunchy, flavoursome. I'm going to put in chopped tomatoes, the dried tomatoes that are in the oil, the chilies, and squash egg. All goes into the pan together like that. Pan back on the heat. A few of these capers, mix it all, the ingredients together, and then simply put it back in a pan. So all those eggs are going to start cooking, you can see them bubbling up, and all of that flavour, you've got crispy, crunchy texture from the bread, you've got soft and gooey and delicious mushrooms, wonderful flavour from the bacon, acidity from the capers, a bit of spice and heat from the chilies lovely kind of sweet and sour kick from the tomatoes and that I'm going to stick in the oven for about eight to ten minutes preheated 185 degrees gives me enough time to clean down this massive mess that I've made 
Okay. So I said 10 to 12 minutes. And I've even written it down on the recipe here, 10 to 12 minutes. However, this is the first time I've made this and it's not 10 to 12 minutes. This was about 18. As you can see, we're making this up as we go along. And I'm just gonna leave it here to settle for about five to six minutes before we get to eat it. And do you know what? That crispy bit of bread on the top looks lovely and it's all fluffed up and delicious. Listen, this isn't a perfect omelette. This isn't something that Michel Roux would be proud of. However, this is a pan full of flavor using stuff up from my fridge. Simple as that. I'm gonna take a big wedge of it. You can see the bread is still nice and crispy. A bit like a pie that you just slice it. Look at that. Crispy and soggy bread. Soaked up that egg. You can't have a full English style breakfast without some brown sauce. Do you know what? It's a blag with some bread that's old and stale and left over. Bits and bobs from the fridge. I'll do some more of these if you like them. 